George Fenton has been creating iconic music for film and television for decades. July 31st, we'll see the launch of a contemporary album release of his themes arranged and performed by Simon Chamberlain. The album is titled The Piano Framed. Welcome to Composer Talks with White Bear PR, George. Very nice to be here. Thank you for being here. So George, if in case you don't know who George Fenton is, I'll try to explain a little bit of what he's accomplished in his career. He is a BAFTA and Emmy winning composer with multiple Oscar and Golden Globe nominations for his outstanding work. Some of George's memorable music can be heard in films such as Groundhog's Day, You've Got Mail, and Dangerous Liaison, plus one of my personal favorites ever after, A Cinderella Story. Now, <laughs> George, why did you decide to release this piano album now? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I, I um, last year I started looking through the back catalog uh, in order to make playlists of um, sort of in groups so that I wanted to, for example, group together things that were choral, things that were big orchestral, things that were for brass groups, etc. And I thought that it would be good just literally for my digital platform to put things together, you know, and in the course of it, I thought um, it might be nice to do something for solo instruments. And I thought, well, I may as well start with the piano. So I, I gathered together the pieces that I'd written that are mainly, you know, work piano centric in a way or work piano themes of some sort. Uh, some of them piano pieces, and um, and I, and then a very strange thing happened because I called my friend Simon Chamberlain. He's he's a London session musician. He plays for everybody, you know. He plays for James Newton Howard and Howard Shaw and Alan Silvestri and everybody and Madonna and he does a lot of work and he he um, he's played my scores ever since. I think I may have given him his first ever session, and so. He knows my music really, really well. And I said to him, listen, if I do this album, if I want to make an album of piano music, do you want to play it? And he said, um, he said, I'd love to. He said, but do you, what are you going to record? And I said, I don't know. He said, well, why don't you just send me the things that you're interested in recording and I'll have a listen to them and see if I think they'll make nice piano pieces. So I sent him, he didn't want the music, he just wanted the audio. So I sent him the audio of these various things, a lot of them orchestral, you know. And then he rang up and said, listen, I'll come and play some of these to you and see what you think. And uh, that was it. It was like a gift, like it came back to me, my music uh, yeah. realized on the piano. And, and I can't really over, overstate um, what he's done. He's, he's, he's done something really quite remarkable, which is why I've, I'm making such a fuss about the album because, <laughs> I, because I, I really believe he's done something wonderful with it. Just yeah, as beautiful. A, a piano music, yeah. Yeah, I've had a chance to listen to it and I, and I really enjoy it. I think people are going to love it when it comes out. Uh, how hard was it to curate a list from all, your body of work? Like, how did you whittle it down to this playlist? Well, what, what, I, <clears throat> what I decided was that I shouldn't make it necessarily the best known things. I should just make it things that struck a chord with him and then with me f for their suitability to be played on the piano. And, um, and the interesting thing is that, um, that the, it almost selected itself, the list, because I had a long list, you know, very, very long because um, I've been writing for so many years now. But I, I had a long, long list. And then he, he kind of just came forward with, you know, this piece or that piece. And I, when he played them to me, I became more interested in some than others. And then we worked on them a little bit and, and so on. And so in a way, it selected itself. Even when we went into the studio, uh, we went in with thinking we were going to end up with, I don't know, you know, 15 or 16 titles. And in fact, we ended up with 24 because they, they just seemed worth having. So, so, so we've got them, but, um, it, 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 um, but I think the main thing was not, not to choose it for a particular 
profile you know it wasn't and i think it's important to stress that it's not it's not an album of calm music or you know it's not it's not ambient it's not classical it's not jazz it's not it is literally an album of themes and i think the thing that he's done so well is to capture the variety and to to capture the sort of essence of the style of what the music was originally and and realize it on a piano it seems simple when you hear it but actually it's incredibly detailed what he's done and what is it about the piano the instrument that allows it to speak for you know all the layers of music that you put your work into i think about this a lot actually um and i have thought about it a lot lately the piano is a very strange instrument if you think about it um if you compare it say with a stringed instrument or um even a guitar you know it the if you want to play a note you know say you want to play the d above middle c on a guitar or on a stringed instrument you have lots and lots of options about where you play that note how you play that note i think even in some woodwind instruments and things you have choices and certain notes about how you finger to play the note what where what string on a stringed instrument you decide to play the note on with the piano you only have one option which is to hit the note you know it's like <laughs> there is only that one note and so the expression on the piano becomes very very particular to the touch of the person playing and it's remarkable to me given that it's a percussion instrument how differently it can sound under different people's hands you know all very good players but they just make it sound different the thing that the piano has because it has so much dynamic range it is it is capable of expressing things it, and in this album it's it this is what's sort of in a way great about what he's done you mentioned ever after the cinderella film that's a big sweeping theme played by a big orchestra with strings and a horn counterline and things like that and it, you wouldn't think that it would be possible to carry that tune effectively on a piano but if you play the right accompaniment on the piano because you have a lot of you know you've got a lot of range on the piano then with the right amount of the right sort of accompaniment and things you can then get the nuances of something that's very sustained and and remarkably i think that's what he's simon has achieved with this album absolutely i that track in particular uh, because I mentioned at the top of this interview, it's one of my favorite films and scores, and and just uh, the piano track really captured the essence of that 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 score, and I and I felt that you know you relive those moments with film music, the nostalgia, and uh, yeah, so it's one of my one of my favorite tracks on the album. Uh, now working with Simon, how how was it working with Simon? I know you've said to you that he's an incredible. Um, piano player and performer, but how did you two collaborate like in the studio during the recording process? Um, well, we, we had a, uh, we had a, we've worked in the studio many, many times before, um, but this was slightly different because he, he really became, well, he is the artist on the album and I am really the author of the album, but, but also the producer of the, of the album. So we, we chose very, very carefully um, where to record. And then we chose very carefully how to record. Um, it's not for sort of pure, it's not for purest reasons. It's not, it's not, it's not because, um, you know, because I'm trying to sort of make a point of any kind. But, but what, I, <clears throat> what, what I wanted him to do was to, play on a fantastic piano and that if he played on a fantastic piano that we wouldn't really need to do very much to the sound of the piano um, so 
it's probably less, you know, echoey, the piano, than it would be, say, in the context of a score. Um, quite often recordings now are very sort of ambient sounding, um, roomy sounding. But this is the idea of this, which we both wanted really was that you could, you felt you were like standing next to the piano. If you put headphones on, you can hear the pedal noises, you can hear the hammers get the lifting, you can hear him breathing virtually, you know. And that's kind of nice because the album, I think, is intimate and it needs to feel intimate, like he's playing it for you, you know, playing the tune for you. And um, that's what we wanted. So, so we went in with that intention and then, I mean, literally, uh, he would record and myself and, and, and Ronan, the engineer, would sit and listen, make notes, we'd play them back. I did rough assemblies of what he played. We did some editing, we went back and did some re-recording. And I really, really enjoyed it, the process, because I could focus. One of the things about doing film music for a living is that you, you know, you, you, you record a score that's very expensive to record. So you tend to go in and, and, and it's like ready, steady, go. Everyone plays and you leave, you know, because that's all you can do. You, you, you have a lot of people. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an expensive thing to do. You, you get what you want and you go. And with this, um, what we both found really enjoyable was to have the time in the studio we could change mic positions, we could check this, we could do this and so And that was much, you know, because we were making an album. And so it had an album kind of vibe about it. And, um, and that was really, really pleasurable. So we became very uh, obsessed with the detail of every track and, and um, how to get the performances just right. And, um, and that involved some you know, we worked on the scores a little bit together, but in the main, I have to say that he, what he, what he first took down and played to me, in essence, is more or less um, what this is, and and for that, I love it. That's incredible, and I love the, the the discussion of the luxury of time to be able to experiment and play around and really get to you know curate the sound of how this is going to be experienced by people. And yeah, it does feel very close, very intimate. Uh, so bravo to that. <laughs> now, uh, we've been talking about that. You have a, a large body of work. You've been working in music, film music, especially for a long, long time. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who wants to quit their passion? They, they're in this film music industry and they're just like, had enough. But because for whatever reasons, you know, what, what keeps you engaged? What keeps the longevity of your career going? Well, of course, the, the, when you think about quitting, and we all have, um, I've thought about quitting when I was younger. Um, I think when I was younger and I thought I might quit, um, I think I had more options than I have now if I quit. So um, as you go on, you know, you have less and less reason to go to do something else. Um, but I think I would say that the thing that's always appealed to me, um, and I say this with, with absolute sincerity, is, is besides the music, um, this is a very nice world to be in because the people who are in this world are dedicated to one thing, and that is music and the wherever you can go to, to find a way to be with music and the people who make it and the people who listen to it and the people who write about it, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't matter. It's not about writing or playing or anything. It's just about being in that circle and you can do it in many forms of music, but I think you have to think very carefully before you leave the world of music because 
it's a you know generally speaking it's a benign world and i think it's benign because everybody is focused on something that is unattainable which is the ceiling in music and you know you'll never touch the ceiling it's it gives everybody within the world of it a very nice kind of fraternity in a way which which i think is the reason i've stayed in it mm -hmm. i do like the community the film music community the musician community everybody it's it's a really great kind of family to be a part of so i totally agree that to think about what you would miss if you quit like the people that you are around every day um to not not see them anymore is a, is, a, is a great incentive to kind of keep going and that ceiling the ambition to touch the ceiling though is what where we get amazing music from <laughs> well we do <laughs> but uh <laughs> but it's just uh you know it's a mathematical impossibility and, yes. and it's, also, it's also it's also um i mean when you think of the greatest and great people that have gone before and are current people who are really so so gifted and they still they still are reaching you know they're mm -hmm. still they're still struggling and that's that's um i think that's a really important that's a really important part of it um but i think also if you if you I mean, I imagine when people feel like quitting, it's because things aren't going the right way. They haven't got enough doing the things they want. They haven't got enough work. They haven't got the right kind of work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think we all have those times, you know, that, that uh, um, <laughs> I always used to say, every time I'm doing a comedy, you know, I wish I were doing a drama. Every time I'm doing a drama, I wish I were doing a comedy because somehow you, you, you always, you know, whatever, whatever sort of anxieties and difficulties you have, they're always for the thing you haven't got. And when it's fallow, you know, when you haven't got anything going on um, and you start to ask yourself the question, you know, am I really doing the right thing? Should I really be in this? Am I wasting my time, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, it's very difficult to keep your self-belief but I think one of the great things about music also is that it's a tangible thing. And if you think to yourself, well, actually, can I really do this? Am I any good at this with a thing like that? Well, then go and play something you've written or go and listen to something you've done or, you know, and reassure yourself that there's things about what you do that you like. And that's a good reason to keep staying there. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, what do you hope audiences take away from the piano framed? What, what are you, what are you hoping for their experience? Well, I think uh, two things really to appreciate the the album as a piano album <clears throat> rather than a film album. That would be the first thing. So that they just listen to it as an album of piano music and appreciate how beautifully played it is. That would be the first thing. And the second thing is that if it makes them curious about the titles, you know, the one thing I will say about it is that he's managed to capture, or we've managed to capture, the, not only the spirit of the music, like you said about Ever After, and I, I think several of them have the spirit of the music very, very, um, it's, they've got it down, you know, it just sounds exactly like the way the music was supposed to sound when it, whatever it was played on. But also, it's, it also speaks for the spirit of the film that the music was written for. And if it makes people curious, well, what was Handful of Dust? Or, you know, what was this film? Because a lot of them are from a long time ago. And it makes them curious enough to go and watch the film or find out a bit more about the film. I think that that would be great because because the tracks are in style and mood and and the spirit of them they are a key in to the spirit of the film for which I wrote the music and that's why I why I think he's made it so successful this album. Absolutely. 
And my last question for you is what music would we find on your playlist? Well, my playlist is very, very um, sporadic, first of all, and, <laughs> and spasmodic because, because at the moment I'm, I'm working so hard. But I tend, um, I tend to listen to things that I'm introduced to. You know, if somebody says, hey, what, you know, what about li listening to, to this? So, so recently I've, I've been working with a pianist, a Russian pianist, um, and as a result of that, this is a sort of for a charity thing, um, I heard, I started listening to quite a lot of Poulenc, French composer, and um, it's really wonderful music, and, and it's music that I'd, you know, I'd listened to when I was a kid, um, and a, a, in my 20s and things. I, I was in, sort of fascinated with those French composers of that period. So I listened to a lot of Poulenc and Mio and Satie and people like that, Hibert. But um, coming back to Poulenc's music, I really, really enjoyed it. And then I also, which is a completely different thing, I've, I, I met a young saxophonist who writes and he has a he ha, he has um, he releases music, and uh, I've been listening to his music lately. He's called Quinn Alton, O U L T O N, and um, I think his stuff's really great. And he uses the saxophones um, in a sort of like a trad. I mean, it's like he's he's kind of informed by his knowledge of jazz, but he uses it in a totally contemporary way. So that's my check it out that's nice yes good check it out list well thank you so much for taking the time to join me on composer talks with white bear pr and for those of you watching remember to check out george's album the piano framed starting july 31st digitally and later in august on vinyl and cd thank you so much george thank you so much